Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Hassan Gökberk Bayhan. I'm a graduate research assistant at Michigan State University. And today I'm going to talk about line of balance scheduling or if it's tech time planning, a comparison of two methods. Conference paper co-authored by Dr. Atila Damji from Istanbul Technical University and Dr. Sevilay Demirkesan from Gebze Technical University. Tech time planning in the construction industry become more widespread and perceived as a new idea on the other hand, line of balance scheduling already integrated concepts similar to the tech time planning aim to optimize the schedules and production rates in repetitive works. In the study, similarities and differences between these two concepts are investigated from a literature and historical perspective, and the reasons behind the distinctions are traced. Although there are regional variations at the statistical data, before COVID-19 pandemic, the construction industry was expected to contribute to about 15% of the global GDP by 2020 and continue its growth with a rate of 4% annually, indicating that is among the fastest growing industries. However, the industry has not still yet shown its potential in contributing to GDP due to inefficient processes in planning and execution of construction projects. To increase the efficiency in processes and foster innovation towards achieving excellence, the industry is still seeking for innovative tools, techniques, and methods. Among those, Lean is introduced to the construction industry in the 1990s by Glenn Ballard and Gregory Howell after they observed several inefficiencies in the construction processes. Then Laura Koskela translated Lean production philosophy from manufacturing industry to construction industry. Hence, it is important to benefit from lean tools and techniques specific to scheduling or other effective scheduling methods for eliminating time and material-related constraints. Being one of these techniques, tech time planning is an effective means of managing customer demand and supply chain at the pace the work requires. TTP helps deliver the product or service at the rhythm that the customer desires. Moreover, LOB is another effective method to optimize recurring works and manage time. The highest productivity in activities are ensured by the principles of natural rhythm and optimum crew side. In lean philosophy, waste is defined as anything different from the minimum quantity of equipment, material, parts, and labor time that is essential for production. Garras identified material and time related wastes in the construction industry. And according to time, we have waiting periods, stoppages, clarifications, variation in information, rework, ineffective work, the interaction between various specialists, delays in plan activities, abnormal wear of equipment and material. The repetitive level of work is based on the similarity of the quantities for each location. In the late 1920s, the eradication of glamorous 102 story Empire State Building is a corner store for location dependent repetitive time plans using a flow line diagram to plan and control the work by multiple time defined work steps. The construction team established a production line of standard parts controlled by a visual chart of floors and time spent. The horizontal and vertical axis combine activity sequences by short bars. This visualized control system provided completion with $24.5 million, 40% under budget, and 18 months earlier, 25% faster than anticipated of the tallest building in this era. The first systematic method for location-based planning called line of balance, a combination of mathematical and graphical techniques in the 1930s. The method was first provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and it was later embraced in the US Navy to coordinate the mass production in the World War II and Korean War. Later, the method found a wide area of application and it was fully adapted in the construction industry. Lumsden's 1968 study adapted LOB for scheduling based on how many units must be completed on any day to achieve the program by explaining and linking activities to network schedules, resource leveling, and cash flow analysis. To implement LOB in the construction industry, first, daily working hours and optimum creep sizes are established after the estimation of the required man hours for the production of one unit. Using optimum creep size enables the duration of the production to remain constant and efficient. Then, the start and finish times of each activity at each unit are calculated. In LOB, work starts from 1 when the first unit is finished and the slope of its two lines representing start and finish events 
gives the delivery rate. The current form of LOB focusing on resources, which might portray the cycle of crews in a bar chart-like form. Conversely, the penalties of interruptions result in idle times and two lines representation creates graphical difficulty in the critical path. The LOB quantity used in Lumsden study considered that the productivity is a linear relationship of quantity over time and each activity shall not be lower than the target delivery time. Nevertheless, the assumption of the linear relationship in the production is flawed since the time needed to perform the same job will be decreased by repeating. LOB stand out among other process interaction simulation techniques and stochastic approaches with their superior features to balance operations. Each activity is continuously performed and the activities are grasped by the grace of production. A time dependent activity is defined as an activity must be carried out right after the preceding activity as frequently used in CPM. In such activities, rate of production is shaped by the dominant time dependent counterpart activity which eventually causes one activity to suffer idle times. Also, individual space-dependent activities are required to be brought into the calculation as a combined activity and are calculated by adding up to unit durations. The calculated date of the milestone activity needs to be compared with the required milestone on the specified unit, and if required, compression could be achieved by accelerating the precedence activities. Stage buffers between major phases are introduced and additional safety contingencies for duration of each activity in a network. The optimum race for production could be defined by the functions of natural rhythm. RDT in 1988 defined natural rhythm as the optimum rate of production that a crew of optimum size will be able to achieve. Later, Biota in 2017 used it as the delivery rate. Any rate of output difference is doubtlessly yielding to idle time for labor and equipment. In LOB, to shift the start time of activity, first the activity in question must be assigned with a finish to start relationship with its preceding and succeeding activities. Second, if the activity is in the first unit, the slope of two lines must be less steepness than the slope of the preceding activity and greater steepness than the slope of the succeeding activity. And if the activity is in the last unit, the slope of two lines must be greater steepness than the slope of the preceding activity and less steepness than the slope of the succeeding activity. Third, precedence relationships and time intervals must be evaluated to allocate resources between activities, as could be shown in the figure one. Increasing the number of crews is the most effective solution to keep the cost constant and accelerate production. The maximum productivity could be achieved by using multipliers of nature rhythm of production rates. Interrelating time and space de dependent activities, sharing the same crew or equipment for more than one activity, altering LOB activity criticalness and generating LOB float might result in better efficiency. In the LOB analysis, the precedence relationships between activities are used, but the production rate is the major parameter for criticalness. Lean philosophy aims to eliminate so-called seven types of waste, overproduction, inventory, repair, rejects motion, transport, processing, and waiting. In the construction industry, lean also embraces the principle of value, value stream, flow, pull, and perfection. Tuck time planning is increasingly used for residential construction projects, highway projects, and hospital projects in different countries. Tact is originated from the Latin tactus, meaning touch, sense of touching. In Latin American countries like Peru, tact time planning is referred as activity trains. The German term tact is the translation of cadence or rhythm into the lean philosophy, which is used to refer to beat at the demand rate. Unlike the rhythm in music, which can vary with an individual tax, tact has predetermined repetition process with the same duration. To maintain flow and create a pull system, a constant tag time is to be determined for all workstations throughout the project and relevant knowledge is forwarded through a balancing mechanism for the production system. If this particular time interval is falsely set, a high tag time could cause many trades to have idle time. On the other hand, a low tag time could cause a system to suffer from overproduction. In both cases, the project team encounters waste and concurrency is collapsed. Therefore, at fieldwork, trades underload their production units, example, 
like 7 or 80% of capacity after evaluating work density. People who finish the work earlier than tax time can work on off tax, prepare for the next tax sequence, or improve their work. The tax time eventually enhances up and demand rates to become matched with a steady flow where each zone trades identify the scope, means, and crew loading of work. Tax time is based on the manpower, standard space unit, and performance factor. It provides activities to be separated with the correct size and sequence. However, the tax time and zones must be large enough to work productively and small enough to control at a frequent interval. It also maintains a clear outlook on upcoming work and reduces stress on the entire project team, ensuring the completion of a pre-calculated fixed daily batch of work with even intervals conforming with the project objectives. A temporal movement of a task in a given tag time sequence does not affect the completion of work within tag time sequence, which is called a schedule noise. And if this movement shifts into another tag time sequence, it is then called schedule variance. Franson summarized this process in six steps. Collecting data, divide workstation by zones, order by trade, collaborative planning of all parties to design and execute a certain task, balance work equally, time needed for each trade, plan according to tag time. Binninger added tag leveling, shifting variable to work steps, manpower buffer, and determined milestones for consumer priority to these steps. LOB and tag time are two intertwined concepts which have several features in common. LOB and tag time suggest that all activities are to be performed with a single rate, turning the work into parallel programming to avoid delays. Both methods include phases of planning, doing, checking, and acting. LOB and tag time planning allows a clear outlook on upcoming works, considering different crews to perform parallel tasks activities to be separated with the correct size and sequence. The deviations in the assembly and aim to work with target delivery rate. The zones, the trade sequence and duration need to be clearly defined for both methods. And if leveling applies in LOB, workflow should be balanced in both methods. After leveling approach is completed for both methods, better task definition, even use of resources, minimization of inventories, reuse of crees in different operations, uninterrupted work, work for a crew, and visual management are, are implemented. As it can be followed from the figure two, the graphical representation is quite similar, but different. LOB allows to detect cycle times, therefore reduces cycle times, which aligns with the continuous development mentality of lean production theory. LOB is a superior tool overarching Kanban cards to indicate when materials should be supplied to units or tasks visually. Focusing on resources can portray the cycle of crews in a bar chart form, yet the horizontal bar representation of activities between two parallel lines in LOB might suppress a crew discontinuity due to non-balanced productivities of a predecessor successor pair into two back-to-back -back bars at works unit stations. LOB uses buffers between critical activities or the crew's production capacity. Nonetheless, tag time planning implements buffers in the production capacity of the crew. The line slope gives the delivery rate in LOB and it should not be mixed with the production rate in the flow line methodology. In this manner, the slope of the boxes in tag time planning represents tag time or customer demand rate, which is similar to the delivery rate. Tag time planning requires crews to work at the same pace without buffers to reduce non-value adding time. This might cause more work backlog in the unique task of construction projects and the comprehensive communication plan. But in a well-determined tag time with elite project members, people who finish their work earlier than tag time can work on backlogs, prepare for the next sequence and improve the work capacity by innovations. The brilliant philosophy to match demand and supply in tag time planning with Continuous improvement combined with the construction industry experience and methodical wise of LOB surely will contribute to our construction industry find its true potential. As a conclusion, line of balance and tag time suggests all activities are to be performed with a single rate and uh, turn the work into parallel programming to avoid delays. 
Planning, doing, checking, and acting is implemented in both methodologies. Activities aim to be separated with the correct size and sequence aims to work with a target delivery rate. The cycle times are detected by a lobby that aims to reduce these times and aligns with the continuous development mentality of the lean production theory. LOB uses buffers between critical activities or the crew's production capacity. Tag time planning implements buffers in the production capacity of the crew. LOB and tag time planning have different representations visually, and it is found that tag time implementation is harder in the high number of varying tasks requiring workable backloads or locations. Thank you very much for listening.